Football is back. The Blue Jays are gunning for a playoff spot, and the NHL season is around the corner. And how do you know? It's because we're back. Yeah. Woo! We're here. Uh, all the action starts at Sports Interaction. It's Canada's Sportsbook. Uh, bet before the game, live and in play, or on one of the many prop bets. They've been doing it right since 1997. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now to see all sports betting has to offer. Head on over to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I want to include you guys in the ad. I realized I was sort of taking all the script. And Thanks. Sorry Thanks, about Dad. that. Guy that everybody was waiting on, Nazem Kadri. Seven years, $49 million. Includes an $11 million signing bonus. $49 million guaranteed. Annual average salary of $7 million. Um... He'll earn a base of four and a half million with the signing bonus of two and a half uh, this year, while carrying a cap hit of seven million bucks. As uh, obviously, as it happens, his, but his base is going to be his cap hit from last year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not bad. How bad? Uh, yeah. So he already signed. So w- the day he signed, he gets eleven million. Hilarious. And then he gets a signing bonus. Is that added on to? It's not like it's eleven million, and I guess two. Like is eleven million not the signing bonus? Eleven million is the signing bonus, but he also gets a signing bonus of two. Oh, I guess he gets two point five million dollars just next. Yeah, July no. 1st. Uh, in the total of his contract, eleven million of his contract is being paid out in signing bonus. I so see. it's two point five, two point uh, five, two point five, two point five. Not all at once. One million, then zero zero. Yes, he's doing quite well. Every he's summer, <laughs> drinks on Nas. Or he makes you split the bill like LeBron James in that Amy Schumer movie. Well, let's talk about this for a second. That I choose to think is a Bill Hader movie. Let's talk, anyway. <laughs> let's yeah. talk about the... I love Bill Hader. Um, it's let's, funny. Let's talk about the Calgary Flames for a second. Yes. Are the Calgary Flames better or worse than they were last year? Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say they're at, at least as good, if not better. I'm going to lean towards better. Okay. Why do you say that? I just feel like they're a little bit more balanced. Their decor, I mean, oh. who's got a better one? The list of teams isn't longer Carolina, than five. Carolina, maybe? Yeah, like, there are teams where I'd be like, okay, maybe them, maybe them, maybe them. They're all maybes, and there's less than a half a dozen of them. Mm-hmm. Um, really, all they need to pick it up is uh, Markstrom, who was a Vesna <laughs> candidate like yes. in the conversation. Mm-hmm. They just need him to not be utterly terrible against their biggest rival. That's it. That's all he's got to do, man. Right. That's all he's got to do. He was outdueled by Jake Ottinger in the Dallas series, but everyone would have been. Ottinger was out of his mind, but he couldn't even outduel Mike Smith in that Battle of Alberta series. And b- both goalies were terrible. Just terrible. Yeah. Um. So I, I, think, I think they have a... More Daryl Sutter identity, if that makes sense. If I could say something about Bradtree Living for a second. Oh. When, you, when you saw that uh, Johnny Gaudreau had signed in Columbus, and everybody, I mean, we talked about this a lot. He was like, Columbus? Yeah. Over Calgary? Over Philly? Over New Jersey? Over anywhere else he could have gone? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and, but, but again, people do make the comparison Columbus or Calgary. Uh, and then... Matthew Kachuk says, I'm not signing here. Yeah. So you're going to have to move me. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that was probably always sort of coming. But had Gaudreau stuck around, you think Kachuk maybe would have as well. That was years in the making. It was. It would seem like it was coming. Um, And we'd heard rumors about that. But you hear that all the time where players are like, this guy intends to force his way out in several years. And you're like, sure, we'll see. He signs an enormous extension. Yeah, Yeah. because he's like, ah, it's actually not so bad here, and they like me. Does he fit the window, JT Miller? Yes. Yes, he does, apparently. We'll we'll talk about that, too. Um, Bradtree Living did Calgary, Calgary tourism, a huge disservice and then a huge service. Oh, yeah. Gaudreau and Kachuk leaving. You know, we talk about players not wanting to come to Canada. Did, Did everybody not... A little bit think what the hell's wrong in calgary for a minute oh right. two american olympians as well like I, oh I f- yeah i feel like we that's talk about that enough but you're right yeah like those are they two be. of the best american wingers like certainly guys who would have made the american olympic team had there been an olympics where nhl players uh were allowed to go um high profile american players it just feeds into that narrative right mm-hmm. and I, for a long time, have been saying that the safest job in Canada is 
general manager of an NHL team. And Brad Treliving, I believe, once Mark Bergevin left Montreal, was the longest tenured one. He's got to be close to a decade. He's, I want to say 2014. 2014, April 28th. Well done. There you go. 20- and was he not part of that Burke era? Oh, yeah. He, even before that? He was under Burke. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. he was under Burke. And he had a good start. You know, the cardiac kids and that all they did was come back. <laughs> And I think it was 2015 and Johnny Gaudreau was young and uh, uh, Brady, uh, Brady Kachuk, Matthew Kachuk was just a twinkle in their eye. Hadn't even been drafted yet, but time went on and the flames continued to do nothing, nothing. And in one off season, he went from disaster to hero. And I think he bought himself some significant time unless the team completely sucks. <laughs> Which I mean, that's but even if even if that happens, you can't blame him for anything. Like at this moment, I can't blame him for trying. At this moment, we should all be giving him high fives and praise because he didn't turtle. His two biggest stars left, and he said, "No, our window is now, and I'm going to go replace them." And this is what we should be asking out of all of our GMs: Mm -hmm. is is you have an opportunity to win, go get the players that'll make you win. And he did exactly that, and he he provided answers. Mm -hmm. Um. What the hell are the Flames going to do now that Johnny Gaudreau has gone and Kachuk wants out? He makes the trade. Oh, well, what what happens when Huberto uh, walks in a year? He's not walking. They go for one meal in Montreal and then he signs an extension. One meal in one Montreal meal. at a Boston pizza, I assume. Was Alan there? Cause Definitely. Because the tree living zone, Boston pizza. You see, okay. because Canada humor. Adam, Adam do you know if Canada Alan was there? That. His agent? I don't believe Alan was at that dinner. Wow. I don't believe Alan was at that dinner. I think that was just between the two of them. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I, I don't think he was. I can ask him. I don't believe we'll that. We'll ask at him in the first. Agent Provocateur will be back. We can ask. There you go. But I, I don't believe he was there. Why don't you do some work? <laughs> why don't you get to work? <laughs> I was trying to let Alan have his summer as well. Why doesn't he get to Alan's work? Alan's been busy. Yeah, yeah, he has. He really <laughs> has. Like every one of his clients moved. Every yeah. stinking one. He's he's had a very busy summer. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, the Huberto staying. Um, <laughs> if Uyghur leaves. Are, I assume that would hurt, but are Flames fans going to be too salty about it? I don't think so. I don't think and so. Well, I, think, time listen, for that. I think, and I, yeah. I also think you've got Mackenzie Weger for this season, and you could get him signed, but he's a great, that's a great pickup. And I think what was interesting about that trade, and we're just at the Huberto trade right now, mm-hmm. is, is that they got both. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan Huberto set the record for left wingers and assists in a season last year. I know that we, like, I, I think Leaf fans, because we we didn't make it to the second round again, forget that Austin Matthews won the heart. Mm-hmm. Need we remind you that Huberto had a record-breaking year last year, record-breaking. And so that the fact that he was able to get a guy like that and a guy as good as Mackenzie Weger, I, I honestly. He's, he's the reason. Mackenzie Weger, in one fell swoop, A, makes their defense one of the best cores in the league. It was already in the conversation Mm -hmm. and B I believe is there, I I can't see that because I'm blind, but I believe he is their fifth highest paid defenseman. He is one, two, three, four, five. That's dumb. Who makes, who makes more than him? Uh, we got Noah Hannafin at 4.9. That's the highest paid defense. None of them make five. Stupid. Rasmus Anderson at 4.5. Chris Tanev at 4.5. Nikita Zadorov at 3.7. And then Mackenzie Weger at 3.2. The contracts here are fantastic. And then Oliver Shillington at 2.5. That Shillington deal is quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Um, I think, I think, so, so, so then, so this happens and then you go, okay, well, but there's still a hole in the lineup. Mm -hmm. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I mean, you got Backlund, but who's going to be the centerman on the second line? How are these lines all going to? You do still have a hole there. And and if you if you if you don't have center depth, you're cooked. Yes, I don't care how great, the especially rest of your looks. when you're going to play the Oilers in the playoffs. Yes, if you're going anywhere, you have to beat the Oilers. And they go and get a guy who just loves to be an asshole to Connor <laughs> McDavid specifically. Well, okay, what did they say when when Nazem Kadri's career really turned around in Toronto? Because it did have a really a downspout. It was the 16-17 um, season. And who was it against? What game? It was Connor McDavid, where uh, early in the season, Connor McDavid, let's let's not revise history, caved the Leafs in all night. I believe the shots were 42 to 29, mm. something like that. And but seconds into overtime, because the game went to overtime, Kadri stripped McDavid of the puck. 
there was no penalty called, and then scored to call game. And that's when Kadri for Selkie was born. <laughs> It was very annoying. Several <laughs> that was no, it very, that was very yeah. annoying. It didn't gain enough traction because there was <laughs> no real basis for it. Yes, there was. Who won that year? Who won Selkie that year? Probably Bergeron. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Probably, but <laughs> I assume like, it was just Leafs fans being annoying. Who's Leafs led, fans? Led by Steve Dangle. Name them. Name them. King of name the Leafs Shane fans. How <laughs> dare you? Well, now guess what? Kadri for Selkie oh, is back. Oh God. When that was a bad 60 games no, on Twitter. It, no, in their first <laughs> game against the Oilers when the Flames hold McDavid to two points, he's gonna it's gonna be Kadri for Zelke. I, I, think, I think and Kadri's the kind of guy that's gonna look forward to that. By the way, uh, uh, Sportsnet kept doing these hits with Eric Francis, who's their Calgary Bureau guy. And Eric is about as positive as you can get about the Flames, even in the worst of times. Like, uh, he, he's just, that's just the way it is. And he, before that Hubert deal happened, he was like, I just, this is a bad, this is a bad summer. Like you just, it, and then those two deals happen and it's a completely different Eric and it's a completely different look. And I'm wondering now, um, because I, I, I asked, I asked the reason, the reason I started the segment with are the flames better is I have a theory that you're going to play a lot better when you know everybody, everybody knows they're in that window, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I think there, there's an argument to be made, although I think it's a bit of an unfair one, that the Leafs guys are, like, Nylander's still, like, 25, and he's the eldest. I know. Right? Those guys are young, young, young yeah. guys. Hubert Okadri, uh, Coleman, all these guys are 29, 30, 31. And this is really the peak, and, th and then it's sort of like, you got the next few years, boys, and that's it. They have a solid, I'm going to call it at least a two-year window. And yeah. I mean, if you yeah, look at their contracts, sure. it's built specifically for the next And they years. brought in a guy who just won. Well, they brought in the guy who knows how to win, which is so important. For the second straight year, they brought in a guy who won. They, uh, Coleman. they brought in Blake Coleman right. and right. gave him a bunch of money, and here's Kadri, give him a bunch of and, money. And so this is, this is where I, I'm kind of wondering, like, I wonder if they're going to play better this year because they all know it's like, we have to do this together now. We got to do this now. Well, and they don't want their effort to be a waste. Like, what, a, what an amazing season they had. Yeah. Are any of us going to remember it for that? No. No. We're going to remember it for freaking getting killed. Killed by the Oilers. It was weird. It was a really weird series. Like, I, I streamed the thing and I'm like, flames have the puck, flames have the puck, flames have the puck, Oilers scored. Followed by the next shift, which was the same shit. And then by the end of the series, it wasn't even that. It was just, oh, they're getting outplayed and they stink. <laughs> it was really weird. Mm -hmm. Really weird. But Kadri's a great match for that team. I believe him when he says he exercised his um, no trade. Because remember that happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe him when he says he exercised his no trade because he wanted to stay a Leaf. Not because he didn't like Calgary. I think 100%. That's fair. Yeah. I believe that. I believe him. Uh, yeah. I think he had, people uh, had a narrative going about how he hated Calgary and like it couldn't happen because he turned down the no trade, but it was because yeah. he wanted to stay in Toronto. I think that's Who an easy Calgary one. Calgary specifically. Right. Like, that's a very, I don't know. <laughs> but no, like really, players. Really hate those people. Yeah. Those <laughs> gosh darn Cal. Cal, what are they called? Calgarites? Calgarians. 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 Yeah. By the way, I, I, that was he knows a joke. That. that was a joke. Um, no, like most players have the Canadian teams on their no trade list, even players on Canadian teams. So and they have a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the Leafs had to deal with Calgary. He was able to say no to it. Um, then they had to deal with Colorado. He wasn't able to say no to it. And then woe was him. He won a cup. Yeah. Not bad. I, yeah. think, <laughs> I think things broke Kadri's way in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so too.